Hi everyone, welcome to the Everlasting Gospel, JesusTheGoodNews.com weekly Bible study channel. Today is the Friday message and welcome. I'm Gerilyn Davis, minister to the unsaved and humble servant of Master Jesus Christ. Praise you Lord Jesus Christ. We're continuing in the New Testament folks, the book of Romans chapter 10 which is a continuation of a letter that the Apostle Paul had written to the body of Christ residing in Rome. The Bible being our life manual intended for all of us from Almighty God. This information, this knowledge is intended for all of us, not just the original audience. Amen. I hope you have a Bible and I hope you're ready to partake of the Holy Word of Almighty God. Jesus Christ is the Word made flesh which dwelled among us. Amen. If you are in need of a Bible, log on to https jesusthegoodnews.com and request a free Bible. Or borrow one, buy one. If there's one in your house, dust it off and open it up. Be blessed. Amen. I hope you join me in a prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you, dear Lord, for the blessing of this day, another day to draw closer to you, another day to share the word of Jesus Christ, the good news with others. Thank you for your mercy, for your grace, for your faithfulness, for your patience, dear Lord. Thank you, dear Lord, that in spite of all the wickedness going on in this world, that you have provided us the true light of Jesus Christ that we can grasp onto and be filled with all goodness, with hope, with peace that surpasses all understanding, that chases away the darkness, that chases away the confusion, that chases away the fear. Amen. Thank you and praise you, Father God, most of all for Jesus Christ, your precious only begotten Son. To you be all the glory, dear Heavenly Father, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, I proclaim this, dear Father God, and pray this. Amen. Amen, folks. Romans chapter 10. The Apostle Paul Begins here, verse 1, Brother, and my heart's desire and prayer to God for Israel is that they might be saved. For I bear them record that they have a zeal of God, but not according to knowledge. For they, being ignorant of God's righteousness and going about to establish their own righteousness, have not submitted themselves unto the righteousness of God. For Christ is the end of the law for righteousness to everyone that believe it. Amen. As we read in the book of Philippians chapter 3 verse 9 and be found in him not having mine own righteousness which is of the law but that which is through the faith of Christ the righteousness which is of God by faith. Amen. It's all about faith. Believing on Jesus Christ having faith and repenting of our sins, turning from them. Jesus Christ, the fulfillment of the Old Testament law, as we read in Matthew chapter 5, verse 17. Think not that I am come to destroy the law or the prophets. I am not come to destroy, but to fulfill. Amen. When Jesus Christ died on that cross, and said it is finished before he bowed his head and died. It was accomplished. He conquered the works of the devil. And we were blessed with an open invitation to come freely to him, Jesus Christ, for forgiveness, salvation, and eternal life. All of us, Jews as well as Gentiles, now, Paul is speaking here of some of the Jews that were not accepting Jesus Christ as the Messiah. 
that were adhering to the Old Testament law and thinking because they were of the seed of Abraham, they did not need to repent, and they were trying to be self-righteous through the law. Paul is speaking to let them know they cannot be righteous on their own. None of us can. We all need Jesus Christ. Amen. Christ is the end of the law for righteousness. Amen. Continuing in verse 5, For Moses describeth the righteousness which is of the law, that the man which doeth those things shall live by them. But the righteousness which is of faith speaketh on this wise, Say not in thine heart, Who shall ascend into heaven? that is, to bring Christ down from above, or who shall descend into the deep, that is, to bring up Christ again from the dead. But what saith it? The word is nigh thee, even in thy mouth and in thy heart, that is, the word of faith which we preach. Amen. The word of faith. Not the word of faith movement, which is a false, perverted doctrine belief system that's going on throughout the world today. Joel Osteen being one of the proponents of this madness. Word of faith to them means prosperity gospel. It has nothing to do with the word of Almighty God. It's a lie. He's speaking here, the Apostle Paul is speaking here, the word of faith which we preach that we live by faith in Jesus Christ alone. Amen. That if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and shalt believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. On our own our hearts are wicked and deceitful, as we read in the book of Jeremiah, chapter 17, verse 9. Once we have a heart for Jesus Christ and believe, then we are called to repentance. And we confess with our mouth unto salvation. The only way we can be righteous is once we believe on Jesus Christ and are washed clean in his blood that he shed for all of us, for our sins. We are covered by his righteousness. Nothing on our own, folks. With the mouth, confession is made unto salvation. For the scripture saith, Whosoever believeth on him shall not be ashamed. For there is no difference between the Jew and the Greek, for the same Lord over all is rich unto all that call upon him. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Amen. Paul makes it very clear. No difference now between Jew and Gentile. However, when he was writing this letter, some of these Jews were adhering to their own version of the Old Testament law, such as the Pharisees, the ones that Jesus Christ himself called hypocrites, whitewashed tombs. John the Baptist called them a brood of vipers. They thought because they were of the seed of Abraham, they did not need to repent and continue to stay in legalism, in the law, not accepting Jesus Christ as the Son of God and believing that the Gentiles were unclean. When Jesus Christ died on the cross for all of us, that means that we are all free to come to Jesus Christ for forgiveness, salvation, and eternal life. Our free will choice, folks. There is no difference now between Jew and Gentile. In the Old Testament, only the Jews could receive atonement for their sins through the animal sacrifice. Once Jesus Christ, the perfect Lamb of God, laid his life down, sacrificed his life for us, we were all cleansed with his precious blood. 
So now we are all blessed with that promise of being forgiven of our sins. But we need to make the first move and go to Jesus Christ ourselves. But no difference now between Jew or Gentile. Whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Amen. How then shall they call on him in whom they have not believed? And how shall they believe in him of whom they have not heard? And how shall they hear without a preacher? Indeed. How shall they hear without a preacher? How could someone know the truth if it's not preached to them? We are called, once we are saved, to continue to share the good news of Jesus Christ with others. So others can be blessed with this precious gift of grace from Almighty God for all of us. All of us. And how shall they preach except they be sent? As it is written, how beautiful are the feet of them that preach the gospel of peace and bring glad tidings of good things. Amen. There are false prophets out there today who are teaching that we should not be out there proselytizing, pushing our faith on other people, trying to convert others. Almighty God calls us to do just that, to share the good news of Jesus Christ, to witness to them. Amen. Out of his love for all of us, he wants us all to come to salvation, to repentance through Jesus Christ. How can that happen if we listen to the world instead of Almighty God? Amen. How beautiful are the feet of them that preach the gospel of peace and bring glad tidings of good things. Not hate speech, folks. Good things. But they have not all obeyed the gospel. For Isaiah saith, Lord, who hath believed our report? Or as Isaiah, as we read in the book of Isaiah chapter 53. So then faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. Indeed. But I say, have they not heard? Yes, verily, their sound went into all the earth, and their words unto the ends of the world. But I say, did not Israel know? First Moses saith, I will provoke you to jealousy by them that are no people, and by a foolish nation I will anger you. Because the Jews rejected Jesus Christ, the Lord God equipped the Apostle Paul, who was once one of the religious elite rejecting Jesus Christ, but he was converted and blessed with a powerful ministry to preach to the Gentiles. After Jesus Christ died on the cross, arose from the dead on the third day, ascended back to the Father, the body of Christ, the first century church, started to grow, as we read in the book of Acts. The Apostle Paul was preaching to the Gentiles. They were hearing. Faith come by hearing. And hearing by the word of God, they were listening. They were believing on Jesus Christ. The body of Christ was growing. The Gentiles were coming to know Jesus Christ, were being saved, they and their households. Amen. However, the Jews were rejecting this. They were adhering to the old ways and thinking that they were the chosen ones and that the Gentiles were unclean. They needed to have the truth preached to them as well and to receive it. A person needs to have a heart for Jesus Christ to receive the truth. Because if a person's heart is hardened, they will not receive it. 
and will be spiritually lost. And if they die in that state, condemned for eternity. The Lord God wants us all to come to salvation through Jesus Christ. Amen. But Esaias is very bold and saith, I was found of them that sought me not. I was made manifest unto them that asked not after me. But to Israel, he saith, all day long I have stretched forth my hands unto a disobedient and gainsaying people. We read this in the book of Isaiah, and that's chapter 65, verses 1 and 2. A disobedient and gainsaying people. He's speaking of the Jews here. However, we do know in Scripture, the Lord has reserved a remnant. When we are approaching the end times, the tribulation period, the fourth earthly kingdom when Antichrist is given his time to rule before he's destroyed, there will come a time when the time of the Gentiles is fulfilled and then the Jewish people will realize that Jesus Christ is their Messiah and will cry out to him. They will be saved. Amen. The Lord God knows all things. He does not predestinate our lives, but he knows all things, so he knows the decisions that all of us will ultimately make regarding our eternal lives, our eternal existence. He knows who is going to ultimately reject Jesus Christ or be saved. It's all about our free will choice, but he knows. So he's waiting for every single Gentile in this world that he knows is going to be saved to do so. For every nation on this earth hears the word of Jesus Christ, the word made flesh preached to them. Once that takes place, then Israel will come to recognize Jesus Christ as their Messiah. Amen. So the Lord will be reunited with his people, the nation of Israel. And once we are saved and serving Jesus Christ, we are grafted into the family of God. So we are all considered joint heirs with Jesus Christ and heirs with Almighty God forever. Indeed. I pray that this message has inspired you to continue reading the Word of God. If you need a Bible to get one, again, HTTPS, JesusTheGoodNews.com. Realize, folks, every single book in the Holy Bible is relevant to all of us, from Genesis to Revelation. Amen. I challenge you now to start spending time in God's Word and ask Him to bless you with understanding. and he'll be faithful. Amen. I invite you to like, share, and subscribe to this channel. Also check out All Glory to Abba here on YouTube. Of course, the WordPress site. Remember folks, our time on this earth is short. 
I pray that you use it wisely and ask yourself where you want to spend eternity. May the Lord God continue to richly bless you.